Hi everybody, Sean Church here for Fastune, and today we just wanted to give you a little bit of a an idea of some things you can do to make tuning for E85 easier, especially if you're using a switchable map setup or you want to change maps regularly on your car. Now, you may already know E85 is a terrific fuel for performance. Uh, high octane, has a great cooling effect, uh, tends to, to liberate more energy for every given pound of air that you're combusting with, so it's great for making power. Uh, compared to pump gasoline, you make a minimum of 6 to 8% more power, and, and if, that's if you're not turning up the boost. If you turn up the boost and you're octane limited already, you can make 20, 30, 40, 50% more power without any problem running E85. And it's pretty cheap. You're going to burn more of it, so your cost per mile is about the same, but compared to buying something like race fuel, no comparison. So if you're going to tune for E85, though, you've got to understand how it works. And the big difference with the 85 is that it has a different stoichiometric ratio. In fact, straight ethanol has a stoichiometric ratio of about 8.9 to 1, whereas with straight gasoline, it's about 14.7 to 1. So there's a big difference, and that's also why we have to burn so much more fuel. We basically need to run uh, substantially more fuel. If, I mean, if our stoichiometric ratio is basically two-thirds of gas, that means we're going to be basically put, burning about 35% more fuel to reach stoichiometry with the 85 than we would, or with ethanol than we would with gas, right? Um, which is all fine. And if you're just tuning on an 85 map, you just give it enough fuel and you're good to go. But what if you want to switch maps? Well, what I want to talk about today is a, a setup we do very, very commonly now with GM vehicles. And the great thing about a lot of GM stuff is that they, GM offers flex fuel vehicles already that are designed to use ethanol fuel at some percentage. And those fuel, those those setups may come with their own ethanol sensors in the car, but a lot of the ECUs had that capability even if the vehicle is not a flex fuel vehicle. And so using software like EFI Live allows us to actually write a custom operating system where simply flipping a switch that's wired into the ECU lets us switch between a regular fuel map and an ethanol map. You can also use it as a nitrous map or something else, but many times these days we're using it as an ethanol map so that the driver can switch back and forth between fuels. But the problem arises is what happens if you are going to switch fuels and you've got a little bit of gas left in the tank when you put ethanol in? Or you have a little bit of ethanol in the tank when you put gas in? Well, what you really need to know is what your ethanol percentage is. And in fact, even if you're running straight E85 all the time, that may vary. And so what we recommend doing is, is picking up a sensor like one of these. I'm showing you a page from uh, Zytronics here. Uh, shameless endorsement. We don't, we don't sell Zytronics products. Uh, I don't have any relationship to the company, but I like what they've done. They provided you with an ethanol content analyzer. Uh, you need the, the little box that's shown here. You need an ethanol sensor. You can see that down at the bottom right of the screen. And that's available from uh, a lot of, uh, uh, well, so a couple different companies, or it's an OEM uh, GM dealership part. Or you can purchase it directly from Zytronics. And you wire that into your fuel line, okay, usually on the feed side. You can also wire, wire, uh, set it up on the return side as well. Uh, and you're going to get, it's going to actually look at the fuel content and measure the ethanol. And typically, out west, we find that E85 typically has between 80 and 82% ethanol in it, so pretty close to what's advertised. In the Midwest, you may find in the wintertime it's down around 70% or less. And so that's going to change your mixture dramatically because you're changing the stoichiometry. Remember, it's just going to be a mix. If I had 50% ethanol and 50% gasoline, then my stoichiometric ratio is going to be uh, the exactly the difference between 14.7 and 9 to 1. So we take that, that's going to be a difference of about 2.5. So about, um, uh, it's going to be about 11.9 uh, to 1 air fuel ratio would be our, our stoichiometry uh, for a 50-50 mix. So as you can see, if we go from E85 to E70, well, our stoichiometric ratio gets a little bit leaner. So if we know the exact amount of ethanol we have in the tank or, or percentage of ethanol based upon using one of these great sensors, well, then we can actually, it helps us with our tuning. And... and in some cases, we can actually use that, an output from this, if we're going into a standalone ECU, as a fuel trim. So if I see that I'm getting 4 volts instead of 5 volts, that tells me I might be at E65 instead of E85, then I can tell the ECU to pull out some fuel and pull out some timing. But in the case of the GM stuff here, what we do is we have a switchable map. And when we switch maps, basically what we're telling the ECU is, is we're basically spoofing an ethanol input. So we're telling the ECU either you have 0% ethanol or you have 85% ethanol. And so what it does is the ECU will look at based upon that switch position, and it'll say if the switch is off, we're going to assume we have a stoichiometric ratio of 14.6. If it's on, it's going to assume we have a stoichiometric ratio of about 9.8 to 1, 10 to 1, which is the ratio for E85. But what happens if we're trying to tune a car? Let's say somebody brings a car in, and they've got a few gallons of gas left in the tank. They want us to do an E85 map. And this is a sealed tank. 
There's no drain plug on it. It's not a return system, so there's no easy way to pull a line off and drain the fuel out. Well, we're going to have some gas left in the tank. And even if we fill the rest of it up with the 85, we're not going to have pure E85. And so what's going to happen is our ethanol percentage will go down. In fact, we just did this today. We had a car that came in, had a few gallons of gas left. We filled it up with the 85, but we still only had about E70. So how are we going to tune that? We know the customer is primarily going to run E85, so we want it to be safe when they run E85. If we tuned it to an optimal mixture on E70, and then they went and put E85 in, it's going to lean out. 3 or 4%, but if this is a high-boost car, high-horsepower car, and this one was, it was about 800 horsepower, that could be the difference between life and death over, the, over, the, over a, a period of time. It may not fill immediately, but we're going to be running higher temperatures and more likely to knock. So what can we do? Well, what we did in this case is we said, knowing that we're at E70, we know that our stoichiometric ratio is going to be a little bit different. So with E85, we're going to target right around 9.8 to 1. But with E70, we can calculate something different. Again, we know the difference between stoichiometry for gas is 14.68. Stoichiometry for pure ethanol is uh, about 8.9. So the difference is 5.78. Okay. If we have E70, what's our stoichiometry going to be? Well, we know that for pure gas, it's 14.7. We know that for pure ethanol, it's about 8.9. So the difference is going to be 5.8. All right. So if we know that we're only going to have, if we're going to have 70% ethanol, we can multiply this by 0.7. Subtract this from 14.68, and we know that E70, our target ratio is going to be 10.62. Okay, that's our tar that's what our stoichiometry should be. So if we go through and say for our E85 setup, and we set Remember that we're going to be targeting 85% when we hit uh, the switch. If we simply set this value to 10.62 instead of these values as they sit right now, so if we were to simply enter in 10.62 on the last few values here, now what happens is when we hit the switch to go to E85, we're telling the ECU that the stoichiometry is this, which is not what it's going to be when we're on pure E85. We go ahead and tune the car like this, set up our timing, set up our fueling, everything should be fine. Now, when we're done, what we're going to do is we're going to go back and enter in our, our values again. All right. And now the vehicle is expecting stoichiometry for ethanol. So if we still have gas in the tank, the vehicle is going to be rich. That's okay. Rich is okay. And we didn't have as much ethanol in the tank when we did the timing, so we could potentially run a little bit more timing, but at least we know we're safe. We might be a little bit retarded. And then as we get a full ethanol into the tank, uh, the mixture will be okay because we're now targeting the correct stoichiometry. So this is a real easy way to get around the problem of having gasoline contamination during tuning for E85. Now, in an ideal world, what we tell our customers is we'll give them an E85 base map and go run through a couple tanks of, of E85 to make sure you get all the gas out of the tank. But if you can't do that, and sometimes you can't, this is a nice little trick to get around that problem.